The following is a presentation of WGAA Sports. To the wall. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. 106.1 FM and AM 1340. Broadcasting online at WGAARadio.com and Facebook Live. And now, let's head down to the field for today's action. Welcome to Cedartown High School Bulldogs Baseball here on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network, the Big Double A, 106.1 FM and AM 1340, as the Cedartown Bulldogs will face the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes here in this uh, game as we're getting ready to uh, get uh, started here. The uh, Cedartown Bulldogs uh, will face Cartersville after falling 10-7 to to the uh, to the Whitewater Wildcats earlier in, in this uh, ball game. So we'll see if we can... Uh, uh, get uh, everything going here. Uh, Cartersville will start out on defense, so Cedartown will be the uh, away team in the ball game. We'll get to the starting lineups here in just a moment. I'll tell you what we'll do first. Well, let's take a 60-second timeout, and we'll come back with the first pitch right after this here on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Are you ready for steel? Equipment, that is. At Croker's Hardware in Cedartown, we've got all the steel equipment. Blowers and shredder vacs, chainsaws, augers and drills, trimmers and brush cutters. We're very proud to be a retailer for the steel product line. As an independent dealer, we can provide many services that the big box chain stores just can't match. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff is always ready to help you select the equipment that meets your specific needs. So call Croker's for a steel today. That's 770 748 4842 to learn more about steel in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome into Cedartown Bulldogs Baseball here on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. We're underway here. It's a nothing in one count to X Holiday, who will lead it off for the Bulldogs. There's a ground ball hit foul toward the right side. Nothing in two the count. We'll get to the Lineups here as we're ready to go. Had to run over there and do something quick here to get going. And let's see. X Holiday, Ace Allen, Tony Ware, do you up here? Pitch on the way. Hits it. So the dogs will have a leadoff man aboard on a hit batsman on the 0 2 pitch. X Holiday, Ace Allen, Tony Ware, Samuel Formby. Dalen Holiday will be the DH again. Batting for the right fielder, Jacob Yarber. Owen Jarrell will play second base. Cole Dingler at first base. Gavin Allred catching. And Jack Roper in left field. That's one through nine in the batting order. Cartersville starting pitcher today. Jackson Harrell. He comes set with X Holiday at first base, and the pitch is a bunt try, and it's foul to the right side, 0 1. No balls and one strike just underway here from Lake Point. A one pitch. Misses low. One one the count now to the Bulldogs. 
Ace Allen. One one the count. Catcher sets up. Pitch on the way is a ground ball back to the pitcher. They'll throw to second base. They'll get to the force there. They go to first, not in time there. It'll be a fielder's choice hit in there by Ace Allen. And that'll be out number one here in the top of the first. Tony Ware will be the batter now with one gone. And a runner on at first base as X Holiday is retired on the fielder's choice. The comebacker to the mound hit in two by Ace Allen. Searchtown wearing their red tops just like they did in the first game. Cartersville purple tops with white pants. The pitch. Hit off the end of the bat, a little flare shot to the right side. That ball is going to be caught by the right fielder. Throw to first. He is back safely. Just able to keep his toe in the bag was Ace Allen. That'll be out number two. So two gone as Tony Ware hits the little flare to the right side that just is able to be caught by the right fielder Miller. And now Samuel Formby is the batter. Allen leads away at first base, two outs, and the pitch on the way is going to be down low, one ball, no strikes. Yeah. Left-handed pitcher is Har Harwell, the starter for Cartersville. There's a call strike. One and one. Runner leads away from first base. Ace Allen is the runner over there. And the pitch on the way is low and away. Two and one. Two balls and one strike. As the left-handed bat of Samuel Formby hoping to extend this inning. Pratt behind the plate for Cartersville. Sets up, runner goes, the pitch is swung on and fouled away to the right side. We'll do it again. It's now two balls and two strikes with two outs. Do apologize for the grainy picture on our camera from the outfield. We're lucky to have that at all today. Two balls and two strikes. Harwell delivers to the plate. Just missed outside. We'll fill the count up at three balls and two strikes. So it's three and two. Harwell set. The stretch and the payoff pitch. Runner goes. Swung on and fouled away to the right side again. And a good battle here with Samuel and their pitcher, Harwell. Purdy at third base. Larkin at shortstop. That's a very baseball name. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The rest of the defense here in a moment. Another payoff pitch due to Samuel Formby. Runner goes again. A little nubber hit off the end of the off his thumbs. They throw him to first base, and the side is retired. A runner left the board here in the top of the first. Let's take a 90-second break. We'll come back with the bottom half of the first after this. You're on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. A minute and a half. Attention high school sports fans, are you an armchair official? You know, the parent or fan who constantly yells at the referees and loves to let everyone know just how bad you think they are. Well, if you think you could do better, then get in the game and prove it. It's time for you to suit up and make the calls where they actually count. Every sport in Georgia needs more officials. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. 
Make the right play. Go to Peach State Ford in Cedartown today. Rush to Peach State Ford in Cedartown. Peach State Ford has a championship lineup of new and pre-owned vehicles. Peach State Ford is now open in your backyard. Peach State Ford is proud to be part of your local community. Whether you're waiting for your vehicle to get service, picking up a part for your vehicle, or stopping by to check out a new vehicle for yourself, Peach State Ford offers a wide range of amenities to enhance your experience. Peach State Ford in Cedartown, 2076 Rockmart Highway, 770-748-3673. Live wire surplus. Stop in today at 546 North Main Street. New items are arriving all the time. At Livewire, they have unbelievable deals on lawnmowers, weed eaters, and leaf blowers. But that's not all. How about your patio? Livewire has top-of-the-line grills, patio tables and chairs, fire pits, and so much more. All fresh off the truck, brand new, still packaged, and price to sell. Livewire Surplus, 678-861-5021. Take your truck. You're going to need it to load up on the savings. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back as we head to the bottom half of the first. No score. Dogs left a runner on first. And Samuel Formby will get the nod for the Bulldogs here as the starting pitcher. For the Purple Hurricanes, it'll be Luke Miller to lead off, followed by looks like Aiden Larkin, the shortstop, followed by the center fielder, <laughs> Caleb Daniel, Andrew Purdy, the third baseman. The DH, Cameron Cochran will bat, Landon Cole, the first baseman, followed by Charlie Rothschild, Jules Pratt, and then Thomas Peters. Ground ball past second base and a base hit. We'll lead things off as Luke Miller gets a hit off Samuel Formby, and he's going to be at first base. So a leadoff single for Miller. Here's come, here comes Larkin. As I said before, Larkin. Very baseball name. Throw goes back down. I think that was actually a piece of plastic that was bumping up against our mic down there at the bottom. That's exactly what it is. Pitch on the way. Bunt try. Perfectly executed. Formby fields and throws. That ball gets away. Runner's going to go around to third base. He'll be there. Runners will be at first and third. That was a bullet thrown over to first base. And the runner is safe, so Larkin reaches on the bunt attempt. We'll see how they score it. Probably a hit, I would say, and that is the call. It is a base hit. Miller goes over to third base on the throw that was a hard throw there from Samuel Formby over there to Cole Dingler, which went awry. So they're at the corners with nobody out. The batter now, Daniel. I just don't know if that center field camera's gonna work today. It's being really, really jittery. Breaking ball for a called strike, nothing in one the count. Yeah, we're trying folks, but it's just not working. Just not working on today. Miller at third, Larkin at first, the pitch. A little excuse me swing, fielded there by Formby. He will have no play at first base. He'll throw over there anyway. And because he bobbled it, no time, and the bases will be loaded with nobody out. Inconspe uh, it's not a good start for the Bulldogs here in this game, in this uh, bottom half of the first inning. Time is called as the Gavin Allred goes up there. The defense, Ace Allen at third base, X Holiday is at short. Owen Gerald playing the back at second. Cole Dingler at first. Jack Roper in left, Tony Ware in center. And Jacob Yarber is in right field. Bases full with nobody out. 
Formby deals. High and tight, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Pitch on the way is line foul, left side. Look out, folks, on the sidewalk. It just cleared the netting over there. The count is one and one. One one pitch coming, and here it is. Call strike outside corner, it's one and two. No score, but Cartersville threatening with the bases loaded and nobody out. One two. Swing and a miss, strike three. As Purdy is sat down on a swing and a miss, he'll take a seat. And that'll bring up for the Canes, number 35, Cochran. So one gone, base is still full. For me, deals, ground ball, hit towards short, and off the glove of X Holiday. That'll be two errors here in the first inning. It allows a run to score, and Cartersville. Leads now by a score of one to nothing. I think the run scores anyway because it was such a slow hit ground ball. X was playing deep for the double play. And Ace Allen couldn't get to it in time. So the bases will stay loaded. It's a one nothing lead for the Canes. And here's Cole. Cole plays first base. Rothschild waits on deck. Formby kicks and deals. Foul away to the right. 0 and 1. No balls, one strike. Pitch for Formby is outside. One ball, one strike. A runner at every base. Pitch on the way. Right down the middle strike. One and two the count. The one two. Ground and foul to the left side. Larkins at third, Daniels at second, Cochran's at first. And the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning, both outs via the strikeout. Six. It's a good job there by Samuel Formby to strike out Cole, and now the, the second baseman, Rothschild, will bat with two outs and the bases full. Samuel comes set. Pitch on the way, it's fouled back. Strike one, hits the chain link. There's actually a knee-high chain link that goes the length of the, uh, of the field up until the uh, walls that divide, or the fence that divides the uh, outfield wall from the sidewalk out there. 0-1, oh, a high chopper. X Holly's gonna have to hurry, he'll field, he'll throw to first, and they got him for out number three. So all things considered, could have been a lot worse than it was. One run comes across here in the inning for the Canes on one hit, and the bases are left juiced. As we head to the second inning, Cedartown trails Cartersville by a score of one to nothing. Back after 60 seconds on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network.
Coverage of Cedartown High School Bulldogs baseball on the Big Double A is brought to you in part by Republican State Representative Trey Kelly of Cedartown. This is Representative Trey Kelly. I want to wish all the players and coaches a safe and successful season. You've worked hard to represent us on the field, and I'm proud to represent you in the Georgia House of Representatives. Again, this is Representative Trey Kelly, and I want to thank you for listening to the Big Double A. Go dogs! This announcement paid for by State Representative Trey Kelly, kellyforhouse.com. Cedar Stream, the industry leader in screen printed apparel. They offer screen printing, embroidery, and signs and banners. At Cedar Stream, they have a fully automated screen printing facility here in Cedartown with the ability to efficiently and effectively distribute products all over the United States. Cedar Stream is a local family run business with a big vision. Contact Cedar Stream today to find out what they can do for you. 800 686 7488 or cedarstream.com. Cedar Stream, shirts, it's what we do. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Temperatures in the low 60s here, maybe upper 50s. Uh, yeah, 61 degrees currently with sunshine. There were, were a few clouds out there, but the clouds have pretty much cleared out of here. We head now to the second inning with Cedartown trailing Cartersville by a score of one to nothing. For the Bulldogs, it'll be Dalen Holiday, Owen Gerald, and Cole Dingler do up five, six, and seven in the Dogs batting lineup. Dalen Holiday will be the batter. First pitch to Dalen is a strike. Oh. Owen won the count. Here's the 0 1. Inside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Harwell from the stretch and the pitch. It's low and away, two and one the count. Peters in left field, Daniel in center, Miller in right. Purdy, Larkin, Rothschild, and Cole from left to right in the infield. Two one pitch, outside, three and one. Three one pitch is due, and here it is. That's a called strike two. Just caught the outside half. <laughs> Payoff pitch coming to the Bulldogs DH, and here it is. A high chopper to first base. Is it foul? Yes. Home plate umpire says foul. So he'll head back to first, I think, or to the, to, to the plate. Yeah, so it should be a foul ball. Open umpire said it was foul, so he'll have another swing. Cartersville coming into this ball game 18 and 4 on the season. Cedartown uh, 7 and 14. Pitch. Ground ball up the middle. And it's going to be a base hit. Diving try there by the second baseman for Cartersville, not able to get to it. And Dalen's going to be at first base with a leadoff hit. Let's go, Big Earn. That'll bring up Owen Gerald now with the runner on first and nobody out. Here's the pitch. A punt try, and it's going to be fouled to the right side, 0-1. Hey, 
Top of the second. Cartersville with a one nothing lead. See if Gerald is bunting again. He is, and it's outside. 1-1. One, one. Dalen leads away. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bunt try again right in front of the play. Going to be a good play. He'll field. He'll throw to first. Wide throw. It's going to be... It's going to be into the outfield. Runner's going to go for second. He's going to be safe at second. So runners will be at second and third with nobody out. The go-ahead run in scoring position. The throw wide of the bag at first base. And Cedartown has something cooking here. Owen Gerald gets aboard. You know, put it in play to make things happen. That's exactly what he did. Here's Cole Dingler. You mentioned Cartersville, 18 and four on the season. Always a great ball club. They're nine and zero in their region. Pitch on the way, swing and a miss. 0 and one. I looked down there between innings, and there is a piece of plastic wrapper or something. It's literally right in front of the microphone on the chain link fence. Low and in, ball one. That's the sound you're hearing. It sounds like somebody's crunching up a, a potato chip bag or something, and that's what it is. Runners at second and third. There's a strike. One and two now to Cole Dingler. Pitch. Popped up. That'll be out of play. Count will stay at uh, one ball and two strikes. One, two. Popped up and foul again. Cartersville's only losses have come to Pickens, Hernando, and Bob Jones. And then they lost to Houston County yesterday. Swing and a miss, strike three. That'll take care of Dingler for the, the first out. That was a game that Jamie Newsom was watching. Uh, former Searchtown Bulldog Casey Newsom is a coach on the Houston County baseball team, and they handed Cartersville their, their only their fourth loss of the season. There's a foul tip by Gavin Allred, strike one. Jack Roper waiting on deck, hoping he can come to the plate with the bases empty here. Oh, one pitch, a little low. One and one the count. <laughs> Foul away off the screen. One and two. Atlanta Braves will be starting up their game in just over an hour with the Arizona Diamondbacks at Truist Park. They're finally back home after a week on the road to start the season. One, two. Foul away to the right side. Good battle going on here. I was very happy to hear that we we're staying on the same field. Uh, uh, for a moment there thought we had to change fields, but here we are on the same field. One and two now to Gavin Allred. 
our very own Sam Branch enjoying the Braves game at Truist Park this evening. Reason why I'm solo tonight. One, two. Missed away. Two and two. Holiday's at third. Gerald's at second. Two two pitch. Fouled away. Still two and two. <clears throat> One nothing lead for the Canes over the Bulldogs. Harwell comes set and the pitch. High and away, full count now. Three balls and two strikes. Now we played Woodland last night, lost that ball game. Woodland will be a future region foe next season. Cartersville also a future region foe. They return to a region after about a six year hiatus. Payoff pitch coming to Gavin Allred. Here it is. Foul back, a good, good cut. Able to stay alive. Got to see former Bulldog catcher and Eli Barrow. He was in a, he's in attendance at this game. Talked to him between ball games. 3-2 pitch, swinging the miss. It was outside. It was going to be ball four. And all red swung at it and missed it. That'll be out number two, and it's up to Jack Roper if the dog's going to score here in this inning. It's a tough strike out there by Allred. A pretty good pitch there from Harwell. Roper with a chance here. Let's see if he can. Runners are going to be at second and third here. Pitch on the way. Is down low in the dirt. Did he call that a strike? He sure did. Oh, my goodness. Nothing and won the count. Cannot believe it. Need a two-out hit here for Jack Roper. Missed away. One ball, one strike. You remember when Pickens was in Cedar Towns region and Pickens wasn't that good? Well, they're good now, folks. That's one of the only losses Cartersville has this year, as we told you earlier. 1-1 one, one is outside ball two. Need a, Need a hit, Jack. Here we go, buddy. Two balls and one strike. Dogs have been competitive in this inning. Let's see if they can get some runs out of it. 2 1 pitch on the way to Roper is low and in ball three. X Holiday waits on deck. Okay, Rob. 3 1. Oh, hit to the right oh, side. Yeah. That ball's going to get down. It's going to score two Jack. runs. Searchown's going to take the lead two to one. Jack Roper with two RBIs, and the dogs lead two to one. RBI two run double or two run two run single rather by Jack Roper on a three one pitch, deposited in right center in right center field for the RBI. And here's Xavier Holiday X was hit by pitch his last time up. Here's the pitch on the way. It's going to be a strike, 0-1. Oof. Man, oh, man. Must be a lot of movement on that pitch. Jack Roper with a two-run single to give the Bulldogs the lead. 
Pitch to Holiday. Runner goes. It's outside. Throw goes down to second base. to the third base side. He's safe. He's got it swiped. And the count is one and one. One ball, one strike. We have two outs. The pitch on the way. Hit off the end of the bat and foul. It'll be strike two. Oh, but I had to get a fresh set of baseballs and now he's got it now we're ready to go one two the count with a runner at second base and the pitch to holiday hits it to right field that ball is going to get down rounding third and heading toward the plate here comes roper there's going to be a play he is safe and the second base goes holiday it's three to one bulldogs way to go two four jack roper with a two run single and then comes all the way around after he advanced to second base on a stolen base, and the Dogs manufactured that run. X Holiday's at second on the RBI single and moves to second on the throw home, and here's Ace Allen. Ace is 0 for 1. But the Dogs have put three on the board here in the top of the second inning. Arwell comes set. Pitch on the way to Ace is outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. What a pitch. He has a called strike on the outside corner, one and one to Ace Allen. One pitch. Sky foul toward the other side. The field 13 and lands right in play over there. And the count now one and two on Ace Allen. Seertown leads three to one. Three runs have come across here in the top of the second. One-two pitch, runner goes for third, it's low, and the catcher cannot get a hand on the ball. So X goes to third base. And the count is two and two on Ace Allen. Credit that a stolen base for Holiday because he was going regardless of what happened at the plate. Two and two the count. And the pitch on the way. Hit off the end of the bat, a ground ball hit to second base. He'll field, he'll throw, they got him by a step and the inning is over. But Cedartown scores three runs and now has a three to one lead as we head to the bottom half of the second. Let's take this 60 second break. We'll be back after this here on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Hey, it's the Border Mexican Restaurant located at 718 North Main Street right here in Cedartown. Their phone number 678-246-1031. They serve a wide variety of your favorite Mexican food made fresh daily. Great food, great fun. It's great for the whole family. Come see us at the Border Restaurant right here on Main Street in Cedartown. Or you can call for takeout at 678-246-1031. The Border Mexican Restaurant is the best Mexican food north of the border. That's the Border Restaurant right here in Cedartown. 
Bradford's Drug Store on North Main Street in Cedartown is your locally owned and operated Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Bradford's accepts most prescription plans and remember Bradford's for all of your gift and decor needs. Bradford's pharmacists take time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions that you may have. Go by and see Bill Brewster and all the fine folks at Bradford's the next time you need a prescription filled. Also use their convenient drive through Bradford's Drug Store, 500 North Main Street, Cedartown, 770-748-3100. And all the folks at Bradford's say, go dogs. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Cedartown leads 3-1. Three, three runs on three hits. Dogs have three errors already, but only one run and one hit for Cartersville. They've got one error. Samuel Formby finds himself with a 3-1 to one lead, and he'll try to hold it as Cartersville comes to the plate. The Canes. Good to see you. Glad you're listening to the big WGWA. Love our fans. Swing and a miss, strike one. Got a lot of listeners out there. We, we, we appreciate it. 0-1. Oh, Outside, one and one the count. As soon as it pops up on Game Change, I'll tell you who this is. It's Pratt. Big breaking ball missed upstairs, two and one the count. Pratt, followed by Peters, and then back to the top of the order with Miller. Samuel, 19 pitches, 15 strikes. The southpaw delivers a 2-1. It's fouled back, 2-2. Two and two. Cartersville always fields a good baseball team. Breaking ball high and away, full count, 3-2. In fact, let me see where Cartersville ranks in the state. They're the, they're the number seven team in the state overall. High and away ball four. Lead off walk. That's not how you want to start the inning. Yeah, they're number seven overall in the state, number one in class 5A at 17 and, and four. Coffee, Villarica, Greater Atlanta Christian, and Ola. The top five in class five, class 5A. And Cartersville, number seven overall in the state, according to Max Preps. Seems like they always are near the top. So Pratt's at first base on the walk. Peters, the left fielder, will bat for the first time. And the first pitch to him is a strike called 0-1. No balls and one strike. Throw to first base. Did they get? Oh, they got him. Oh, man, they picked him off. Oh, yeah, they got him out. Picked him off. Way to go, dog. Abernathy is the courtesy runner for the catcher, and he got uh, he got picked off. He was uh, daydreaming over there on the bag, and he is out number one. Samuel Form be able to get a pickoff. Now the base is empty with one out, and there's a fly ball hit deep to left center field. Going back to the wall, that ball might be out of here, and it's off the wall. Stays in play, he's gonna round second, head toward third, he's gonna have a triple. That ball just missed getting out of here, it was hit about 300 and, it was right there about the 385 sign. It hit off the, about midway up the wall. Tony Ware was giving chase and he couldn't get to it, and that deep, with that kind of carom, Peters was thinking three all the way, and he is at third base with the one out. Here's Miller. And that pickoff move over there at first base saved a run to this point. The right fielder, Miller, will be the batter. He's one for one, and a run scored. That ball was absolutely crushed. Pitch on the way from Formby is inside, ball one.
1-0 pitch. Hit up the middle, base hit. It's going to be 3-2. to two. Solidly struck, Miller 2-2. Two for two. Cartersville answers with a run of their own. And that'll bring up Larkin. Umpires are going to talk about something. Now the home plate umpire is going to talk to Coach Johnson. Looks like the first base coach for Carters was going to join that conversation too. So whatever that whatever that was about, the conversation is over with for this for now. Here's Larkin. The shortstop. And Larkin takes a strike, 0 1. As I mentioned, Larkin, a very baseball name. I think of Larkin, who played for the Reds for so long. There's a little tapper in front of the plate. That's a foul ball, though. It hit off his foot, and it's 0 2. Two and they'll throw back to first base and see if they can pick off another runner. But Miller was not having any of that. Carters will able to cash in the triple with an RBI single by Miller. And there's a ball stabbed there by the shortstop. Throw to first base in time. X Holiday, what a play. Out number two, runner play moves it. up to second base, but what a play there. Saved a base hit, possibly saved runners at first and third. So Larkin is retired on a great play on the back cannon stab there by Holiday deep on the dirt covered turf, or, or dirt colored turf. That's what I'm trying to say. So Miller moves up to second base. Larkin is out. Here's Daniel. Daniel 0 for 1. Samuel Formby deals. Breaking ball, a strike, I believe. Oh, he said strike. We'll have to wait for his signal. Ball 1. So it's 1 0 pitch, outside 2 and up. I'll tell you, you know, this new turf they have here, and they probably had it for, this may be their first year having it, I'm not sure, I think it is. The, the turf that is the same color as dirt, it's, it's really a very accurate, accurate uh, color. I mean, it looks, if you were looking at it on camera, you probably wouldn't, be able, probably wouldn't even be able to tell it was not real dirt. Of course, the grass is that two-tone look out there. Just where it looks really nice. Two and oh the count. And the pitch coming to Daniel. Here it is. Ground ball. Hit to shortstop. X Holiday fields and throws and they got him for out number three. One run does come across. Cedar Town no. still leads through two innings. It's three to two. We come back to the top of the third inning after this 60 second timeout on the Cedar Town Bulldogs Sports Network. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedar Town and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedar Town High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedar Town and Polk County region. Call for tea time, 770-748-9671, located just south of Cedartown at 1811 Buckhannon Highway. 
Cedartown's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. Cedartown Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune-ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedartown Automotive. Cedartown Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedartown High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedartown Automotive on East Avenue in Cedartown. Give them a call today at 770-749-5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedartown Automotive say, Go dogs! Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Cedartown leads 3-2 to two as we head to the third inning. Cedartown with three runs on three hits, three errors. Cartersville, two runs on three hits and one error. Runner was left, was left on in the uh, bottom of the second. Cartersville may have a new pitcher out there. I'm not 100% sure on that. We'll double check. Regardless of the facts, uh, the dogs will bring up Tony Ware, Samuel Formby, and Dalen Holiday, 3, 4, and 5 in the lineup here. Throw goes down to second base. We're ready to go. 16 is the pitcher. It is a new one. It's uh, Herbie. Nicholas, Nicholas Herbie. Actually, it's Nicholas Ruby. H R U B Y. So Ruby will take over on the mound. The line for Harwell: two innings, three hits, three runs, none of them earned, no walks, and two strikeouts. Cartersville. One thing you can say about the Canes, they have a very, very deep bench. They have about, they have two teams on the bench, basically. Ground ball hit to shortstop. He'll pick it up and throw to first, and they got him, just barely. Larkin to Cole. Cole made a great stretch over there to get the speedy Tony Ware. That's out number one, one pitch, one out here in the third. That's the top of the third. Here's Samuel for me. For me is 0 for 1. He takes ball one, one ball, no strikes. They're pitching him pretty quickly there. That one misses low, two and up. Dale and Holiday retrieves that loose baseball and he's the one on deck. And the pitch. Foul back, two and one. Two balls and one strike. Samuel Formby. Hits it on the ground to second. A couple of hops, two gone. Four three on the put out if you're keeping score. Bring up Dale and Holiday now with two outs. I put my water in it. And a high chopper. Fielded there by the second baseman. He'll glove it over to first base. What a play there. Rothschild to Cole. Glove flipping all. Three up, three down go the Bulldogs in the top of the third. Searchtown still up three to two. We'll be back after this here on the Searchtown Bulldogs Sports Network. Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. 
Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back to, to uh, Cedartown High School Baseball on the Big Double A, 106.1 FM and AM 1340 back in Polk County. And, of course, around the world on our social media platforms, Facebook, of course, on YouTube, and also on the NFHS Network. We always have folks tuning in from all around, including Cartersville fans, and I uh, want to thank y'all for tuning in to us this afternoon. I try to be as, uh, I guess, par- impartial as I can be, but y'all y'all all know I'm a Cedartown, a Cedartown guy at heart, but I'll, I'll, I call it like I see it. And Cartersville right now down three to two, but uh, I wouldn't expect the score to stay like that the whole game, but Samuel Formby is Pitched pretty well through two innings. There's a ground ball foul, strike one. Bottom half of the third. Purdy, Cochran, and Cole do up here. Purdy is 0 for 1. Low and away, ball one, one ball, one strike. One one. Did he go for the bunt? He did. Called. They ring it up on a strike. It's one and two. Searton with a three two lead over Cartersville. Bottom of the third. The one two. Just missed outside. Two and two. Down low, three and two. All right, go in there, go in there. Go for me. Cartersville scored a run in the previous inning. Good pitch. Called strike three, got him looking. Woo! Good job. Good pitch there by Samuel Formby. That is the third strikeout he's thrown today. And Purdy will take his seat. That'll bring up Cochran. Cochran. 0 for 1, but he does have an RBI. Cameron Cochran takes ball one, one ball and no strikes. And there's a strike call, one and one. Formby, two and a third, three hits, two runs, one earned, one walk, three strikeouts. The pitch. Oh, yeah. Dropped it a bit low, two and one. Try to give you some Atlanta Braves updates as they come. The Braves will schedule to start in about 30 minutes. Pitch. Bounced up there. To, it's now three and one, beg your pardon. Two and one. It'll be three and one now. Atlanta Braves taking on the National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks. I know that's hard to even fathom, isn't it, folks? But that's exactly what happened last year. Down the middle, but low, and it's going to be ball four. So a one-out walk will put Cochran aboard. Cameron Cochran reaches. Here's Cole, the first baseman. And Cole, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Coaching visit now to the mound. Gavin Allred. Cedartown resumes region play next week. Cedartown will 
host Southeast Whitfield on Monday, and then weather permitting Wednesday, Cedartown will play a doubleheader at Southeast. And then we wrap up the region schedule the following week, hosting Sonoraville, and then uh, Twinville at their place to wrap up the regular season. But this is kind of a preview of what the region might be like next year. Seertown staying 4A, Cartersville goes down to 4A after the realignment. And the retraction of the uh, classifications in GHSA. Taking outside, ball one, one ball, no strikes. Of course, next year we'll, God willing, we'll be able to follow Seertown High School football softball, basketball, and baseball all around. Pickoff attempt to first base, runner back safely. So all you Cartersville uh, fans watching, we, we try to do all the games. Of course, I know Cartersville has a great radio station, WBHF, that covers a lot of their events as well. They do a great job with their product too. Breaking ball, a call, yeah. strike. One and one the count on the outside corner. I have a lot of friends at BHF. Former co-workers of mine. Flag really starched out there, blowing from left to right. That ball hit him, hit his arm. So runners will be at first and second. Cole gets hit by a pitch that'll bring up Rothschild. You know, the, the first game today had everything. We had a double play that was not a double play after a catch that was ruled not a catch. We had a catch that was ruled not a catch after the outfielder ran out of the ballpark and called it kind of OB, I suppose. And then we had a hit batsman that was called back saying he didn't get out of the way of the pitch or something like that. And that's outside ball one to the next batter, Rothschild. Rothschild over one. One gone here in the bottom half of the third. Cartersville has the tying run at second. Samuel Formby, the lefty. Exhales big and now delivers to the plate, and it's going to bounce up there. And the runners will advance. Now the go-ahead run is in scoring position, and the tying run 90 feet away. It's 2-0. So Rothschild in the driver's seat. The 2-0. Ball three upstairs. Samuel Formby starting to struggle a bit. Three balls and no strikes. First base open, but you don't want to walk them loaded. Cartersville can explode anytime. Down the middle and a strike called three and one. Hitters count. 3-1 pitch. Foul away, 3-2. and two. I'm sure he's not listening right now, but Sam Branch, shout out to you, buddy. Getting to take in the Braves home opener today. I'll be listening on the way home in about an hour or so. 3-2 pitch. Bounced up there. It's loaded. The bases are loaded with one out. A walk to load him up. Rothschild will take his base, and now it'll be Pratt the catcher. Pratt took a walk his last time. Base on balls number three for the Bulldogs. Hit batsman as well. Pratt can definitely drive him. So Cochran's at third, Cole's at second, Rothschild at first. One out, bases loaded here in the bottom half of the third. Seertown leads three to two. Breaking ball and a strike right down the middle, 0 and 1. Good curve ball there from Samuel Formby.
No balls, one strike to pitch. Swing and a miss, nothing in two. Wind the 0-2, foul away, still 0-2. Yeah. When Searton played Cartersville last year, I think we actually played them at Cartersville at Echo Park, which is where Cartersville plays their home games. Because I think one of the games got canceled or something, but I remember we played Cartersville at their place. 0-2 misses away, ball one. Sun, set, sun, please. Sun, set, soon. It is in our faces up here in the observation tower. One, two, pitch. Line to third. It's not. They're going to tag that bag there and throw on the first, to second base. And did they get him? Yes. It's a double play. Now, did the run score yet? I think the run will count. Because I think the run scored before the third out was recorded. I think. Coach Johnson is going to go to the home put umpire and confirm that. Ace Allen stabbed that line drive, but he dropped it. But then was able to get the force at third and then went to second base. And they're going to talk about this. We're gonna stay. We're gonna stay right here. I, I'm not sure how this is gonna, what this is gonna turn out. Would you rather have a blanket? Man, if he had just caught the ball, it would have been an easy double play because they were running on contact. They, he might have been able to get back to the bag at third and tag it. But the uh, field umpires are still talking about it. They did get at least one out. But I think when he got the out at third, it turned that play at second into a non-force play. So that could be what this discussion is going to be. Cartersville's out there like the, like the inning is going to go to the next. But the question is, is it going to be a 3-2 lead for Cedartown or a 3-3 tie? And they're still talking about it. Coach Johnson is awaiting the ruling here. So now the home plate umpire is going to talk to the coaches. Let's see if we can see what the reaction is to figure out what they're gonna what they're gonna rule here. I believe if I know my my rules that if the run scores before the third out is recorded it counts because of that so that discussion being had Cartersville's out there like they think it the inning is over and I believe it is. They could surprise me. So we'll see if we can get an explanation here. So we think it's still three to two, but we'll confirm that. Let's take a 30 second break and we'll come back with the uh, top of the fourth after this 30 second break on the Big Double Line. Have you been to Croker's Hardware and Supply lately? Croker's is the place to find everything you need from boots to fencing, from plumbing supplies to wood and gas stove fittings, everything, even paint and flooring. Whether you're building or repairing, everything you need is right here at Croker's Hardware on East Avenue. Name brands galore right here in your back door. Orca and Yeti coolers and tumblers, case knives, native eyewear, buck stove grills, and more. At Croker's, you can find everything. Go by and see the friendly staff there at 1192 Rock. Highway. That's Crooker's Hardware in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Well, we head to the fourth inning, and right now the score is still 3-2, to two, and I think that is going to stay the score unless we get told otherwise. Game Changer has 3-2. to two, The scoreboard here has 3-2, to two, and we're going to go with that. Top of the fourth inning. Owen Gerald's going to lead it off here. First pitch to Owen is a strike called nothing in one. Owen Gerald, Cole Dingler, and Gavin Allred do up here. 
Breaking ball, strike call, good pitch. Ruby is in his second inning of work. 0-2, breaking ball inside, one ball, two strikes. So as of right now, Cedartown still leads 3-2, a double play ended the bottom half of the uh, third. That one just missed a bit low, and a good job by the catcher to try to frame that up. Pratt, but uh, the home plate umpire said no, it was too low. 2-2 two -two pitch, ground ball to shortstop, about three or four hops. Throw on the first is in time to get Owen Gerald, and that'll be the first out. So Gerald's retired, here comes Cole Dingler. Gerald, by the way, was 0 for 1 with a run scored. Cole Dingler 0 for 1 with a strikeout. But that was against Harwell, who left after an inning, or left after two innings, I should say. So right now, Herbie an inning of third. A bunch of zeros on the board. Down low, ball one to Cole Dingler. One nothing to count. And miss ball two. Ruby is very quick with his pitches. Bounced up there, three it up. Ball four. A four pitch walk will put Cole Dingler aboard. That'll bring up Gavin Allred. Gavin 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Seertown uh, defeated, actually swept Northwest Whitfield, who had only lost two games when the Dogs played them. And, you know, Cartersville, definitely a much better team than Northwest Whitfield despite the record. But the Dogs hanging in with these Canes right now. Now we got time called. Pratt goes out to Ruby to give to talk a little bit of strategy. We look at the end of the season for the Seertown Bulldogs region schedule wise. You got the two. Uh, I hate to use the word weakest teams in the region, but that's the only think way I can describe it. When you have Southeast Whitfield and Sonoraville left, it's fouled back by All Red. Nothing in one. Sonorville, though, is, has been good, but they're not. This year, they've been struggling. Of course, if you think of Cedartown in years past, you would probably say they're struggling, too. 0-1 to Allred. Taps that foul. 0-2. And, and Cedartown would love to take at least two out of three would prefer to sweep if they could all, both the last two s series if they're able to do that. They just might be able to lock in a number two seed. But things have to happen for that to for that to occur because the dogs want to make the playoffs and if they end up making the playoffs coming in as a three seed definitely don't want to be a four seed but if they could be a, th a three seed or even a two seed that would be ideal. Little check swing fouled back. Still nothing in two. Of course, he'd love to be region champs, but that's just about out of the question now. After you got swept by Heritage, that just about eliminated that possibility. Heritage still first in the standings in the region. 0-2, inside ball one. The one two runner goes. It's high. Throw to second base is a good one, and they got it. Good throw. Good tag. And he's dead to rights. Two balls, two strikes, and now the base is empty with two outs. And that, my friends, could be an could be an inning killer for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Low and away, ball three to Allred. Oh, 
3-2 pitch. Ground ball to shortstop. He'll throw over to first, and that will retire the side. Seertown had a runner on, but he was caught stealing at second, so nobody left. As we head to the bottom half of the fourth, Cedartown leads 3-2. to two. Back after 60 seconds on the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network. Timeout. All right. Remember, we're a team that plays together. Listen, the winning will take care of itself. We just have to get everyone involved. In interscholastic sports, we celebrate what makes every one of us unique. And in the pursuit of a common goal, everyone in the huddle, in the bleachers, and in the community comes together. This message presented by the GHSA and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. Make the right play. Go to Peach State Ford in Cedartown today. Rush to Peach State Ford in Cedartown. Peach State Ford has a championship lineup of new and pre-owned vehicles. Peach State Ford is now open in your backyard. Peach State Ford is proud to be part of your local community. Whether you're waiting for your vehicle to get serviced, picking up a part-free vehicle, or stopping by to check out a new vehicle for yourself, Peach State Ford offers a wide range of amenities to enhance your experience. Peach State Ford in Cedartown, 2076 Rockmart Highway, 770-748-3673. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back as we head to the fourth, bottom of the fourth, I should say. Cedartown leads three to two. I was looking, Cedartown is third in the region standings right now. Next week, we mentioned Cedartown plays Southeast Whitfield and other region action on Monday. Heritage plays Sonoraville. That's probably going to be a lopsided victory, but we'll see. I mean, you'd love to pull for Sonoraville right there. If they could take two out of three or, or whatever, they've actually won their last four. Heritage lost one before now. Northwest Whitfield playing Central, and you kind of want uh, Northwest Whitfield to play a little havoc there and knock Central out of that uh, that. Uh, well, maybe you want Central to win. I'm not sure. It's really kind of hard to tell. But then when you head to the final week, all bets are off. For me, completes his warm-up tosses, and the throw goes to second base, and we're ready to go here in the bottom half of the fourth. Cedartown leads 3-2. to two. Dogs put three on the board at the top of the second, and have led since then. Cartersville cut within one in the third. Check that in the second, but almost tied the ball game, but a double play, a controversial double play into that inning, and here we are. Game underway in Atlanta. Down the middle strike call to the leadoff man in the inning. Goes back to the backstop 1 1. Diamondbacks had a solo home run in the top of the first inning. They lead 1 0 over Atlanta, over at Truist. The game has just started. 1 1 pitch. Popped foul and out of play. This is Peters. 9 1 and 2. Peters, Miller, and Larkin do up here. One ball, one strike to count. Samuel Formby kicks and deals. Swing and a miss. That's a strike, a strikeout. I had, didn't have the right number of strikes out there, my bad. One gone in the inning, and I'm glad to be wrong on that. They'll take us back to the top of the order in Miller. Miller is two for two with a run and an RBI. Pitch on the way. A bouncer for ball one. When you're doing six different things at once, sometimes you lose focus. Time asked for at the plate and granted by the home plate umpire. Now Miller steps back in. Formby delivers to the Cartersville right fielder and it's outside. Two balls, no strikes. Thank you. 
Shadow's starting to come over the field. A breaking ball right down the middle. He looked at a called strike one, two and one the count. Yeah, the Shadow's starting to overtake the field of play here. The lights are not on, but I don't know if we'll need them for the next uh, little bit. 2-1 pitch. Time was called, I think, yeah. So no pitch was made. Home plate umpire was out there to say something. The wind, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. And the pitch. Line to right field, base hit for Miller. He's gonna round first. It's all the way to the corner and right. Throw comes towards second base. He's gonna be in with a double. One out double for Miller. And he's now two for two. Actually, he's three for three. He's had three hits already. Not a bad day at the plate for Miller. Three for three, a run scored in an RBI. And he laced that pitch into right field toward the corner. Jacob Yarber is playing right field with Samuel Formby on the mound. And he's a capable outfielder, but that ball was hit so hard he had to go a long way to get to it. The shortstop Larkin, 0 for 1. Now, I know this kid is not related to uh, the Reds, Larkin, but I do remember, it's probably been almost 10 years ago now, when, when we were in the same region with Sandy Creek, Marquise Grissom's son was on Sandy Creek's baseball team. That was something. That's outside, ball one, one ball, no strikes. Never saw Marquis at the ballpark though, but I would have loved to have met him. I've heard he's a really nice guy. Atlanta native. His son sure can play ball. 1-0 is tap foul to the left side, one ball, one strike. Marquis Grissom, of course, caught the final out of the 95 World Series, game six to give Atlanta their first World Series title. One of my earliest baseball memories. The 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss, one and two. Tying run at, third, at uh, second base. Hey, Marty. No, not you, come here. What are you doing? Y'all see that hissing coming? Keep it for him. One-two pitch, outside, he was able to check his swing. He thought about offering it, it did Larkin, but he did not. Right. Two balls, two strikes with one out. Okay. Pitch on the way, routed toward third, a diving try, but it gets past him. Runner's going to stop at third base. It's going to be a single. Runners will be at first and third. Still only one out. And Ace Allen did good just to put leather on, or put, put his glove on that. I mean, he really had to dive up there. If he doesn't get to that ball, it's going to score a run and tie the ball game. Holds him to a single and holds the runner at third. So Larkin reaches on that infield hit. Here's... Cameron Cochran. He's 0 for 1 with an RBI and a walk. Left handed batter. They throw to first base, trying to pick the runner off. He's safe. Don't want any errant throws over there. That would most definitely tie the game with the runner at third. Pitch to Daniel. Big cut and a miss, nothing in one. No balls, one strike.
Fly ball, left center field. Roper makes the catch. Runner's going to tag and move. Here comes the throw to the plate, not in time. And we are tied 3-3. Three to three. Credit the RBI to Daniel there. I thought they might have a play at home plate, but uh, unfortunately, no. That's fouled away to the left side, 0-1. This is Purdy, the third baseman, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. But a two-out sacrifice fly brings that run home. I do apologize for some interference from the outside. On our field, Mike, that's outside. One ball, one strike. Pitch on the way. Almost hit him inside. Two balls and one strike. Runner goes 2 1 pitch, is inside. There'll be no play at second. Three balls and one strike. Carnesville's tied this ball game up here in the bottom half of the four, three to three. Canes would love to take the lead here. Three one, popped up. Shallow left field. Who's gonna get to it? Jack Roper cannot make the catch. It's off his glove and the run scores and Carnesville takes the lead. I don't know who had the better shot at that one. The sun is a, it's a time of day where it's tough to see with the sun from the left side. Roper came in and it just drops in front off his glove and Cartersville leads four to three. And all the way around to second base on that. He was running from the get go. East seven out there at left field. And here's Cochran. Takes in the dirt, ball one. Swing and a miss, one and one. One, one pitch. Did it hit him? Nope, inside, two and one. Two one pitch, breaking ball away, three and one, and Samuel Formby is trying to get that third out here, but he's had been, he's had some some issues. Three one, and I think that did hit him. If it hit him, it's uh, the runner's got to stay put, but I guess it didn't hit him. So I guess not. I guess it wasn't a hit batsman, but it's ball four. Runners are at the corners. So 
We may ju- we may have to move that mic between innings. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on down there, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to move it. I think. Anyway, here we go. Here's Cole. Purdy at third, Cochran at first, and a swing and a miss, strike one. There's a throw to first, runner back safely. No play there. Strike called, 0 and 2. Despite it being spring break next week, Cedartown has a full slate of ball games. Southeast Whitfield series next week, the 0-2. Ground ball to third, diving stop by Ace Allen, throw on to Ferg out there and a good, oh, they pulled him off the back apparently. They're gonna say safe. Well, boy, he was out, y'all. Oh my, what a play. Coach Johnson wants, a, wants an appeal, but he's not gonna get it. Cole can't believe he's, he can't believe it. He think he thinks, he thinks, I mean, he kept his foot on the bag and they're gonna say safe. No argument from the Seertown dugout though. Score is now five to three. It brought home a run. Runners now first and second. I called 0 and 1. Are you okay? No. 0 1. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Foul away to the right side, still 0-2. The Canes have scored three runs here in this fourth inning to take the lead. Formby with the 0-2, did he go? No, one and two. Cochran, the runner at second, Cole, the runner at first, and again, three runs already in. One-two pitch on the way. Wild pitch. Moves him up to second and third, two and two. Trying to find an out. Here's the 2 2. Ground ball to shortstop. Maybe this is it. X Holiday fields and throws to first. That's out number three. But three runs come across for Cartersville and they lead five to three as we head now to the fifth. 60 second timeout on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Live wire surplus. Stop in today at 546 North Main Street. New items are arriving all the time. At LiveWire, they have unbelievable deals on lawn mowers, weed eaters, and leaf blowers. But that's not all. How about your patio? LiveWire has top-of-the-line grills, patio tables and chairs, fire pits, and so much more. All fresh off the truck, brand new, still packaged, and price to sell. LiveWire Surplus, 678-861-5021. Take your truck. You're going to need it to load up on the savings. 
Coverage of Cedartown High School Bulldogs baseball on the Big Double A is brought to you in part by Republican State Representative Trey Kelly of Cedartown. This is Representative Trey Kelly. I want to wish all the players and coaches a safe and successful season. You've worked hard to represent us on the field, and I'm proud to represent you in the Georgia House of Representatives. Again, this is Representative Trey Kelly, and I want to thank you for listening to the Big Double A. Go dogs! This announcement paid for by State Representative Trey Kelly, kellyforhouse.com. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. We head now to the fifth inning. Cedartown now trails five to three. Whew, that was loud. <laughs> Bulldogs will try to answer Cartersville's three runs they scored in the top of the inning. Warm-up toss is about to be complete. And the throw comes in. And here we go. Here come the bots again. Again, if you see a link posted on our, on our uh, page that's not ours, ignore it or report it, but don't click on it. Jack Roper will lead things off here in the top of the fifth inning. Nine, one, and two, do you up? Roper, Holiday, and Allen. One ball, no strikes. Ball, no strike. One and one the count. One, one pitch. Missed low and away. Two and one the count now to X. I'm sorry to Roper. X is on deck. Roper, X, and Allen, as I mentioned. Jack Roper with a two-run single his last time up. He also scored. And he hits it to right field. He might have another hit unless we have a good play. No, it's going to be a hit. So Roper, so Roper now two for two. He's on first to lead off the fifth, and that will bring up X Holiday. And X is one for one. He's got an RBI. He drove home Roper his last time up. Temperature yeah. starting to drop out there. It's about 55 degrees now. Lights are now on here at the ballpark. Ruby delivers to Holiday, and it's outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. As most of you know, X Holiday, if you're listening on radio, he bats left in the left-handed batter's box. The pitcher throws right. 1-0 to Holiday. Outside again, 2-0. Calhoun is playing on the field to our right. 2-0 pitch. Outside, ball three. Three-0 right. pitch. Strike called outside corner. It was right there. Three and one now to Holiday. The senior playing shortstop. He pitched yesterday. Pitched well, and he's at shortstop now. That's called strike two. He thought it was ball four. He turned around and go to first. Thought it was low, but it's a called strike two, and now it's a full count. Roper leads away from first. The pitch to Holiday. Hit off the end of the bat down the left field line. That ball is going to be fouled. It's in the bushes there just uh, in front of the bullpen down that way, or could be bullpen, could be batting cage. I guess it could double for either one. Count still three and two. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. And Holiday is down for out number one. Sun finally starting to set behind the 
trees over there, and all of us up here in the booth are eternally grateful. <laughs> but that means the temperature is about to drop big because we're expected to have a frost tonight. Last cold night of, the, of this season, though. It's supposed to be uh, much uh, warmer tomorrow and then Sunday and then chance of rain next week. Ace Allen will hope to move it along. He's 0 for 2. And he hits a little nubber shot to shallow center field. No man's land. The catch is made. The throw to first, not in time. Out number two. Sliding back in was Roper. So Ace Allen now 0 for 3. That'll bring up Tony Ware, who's 0 for 2. Ruby comes set, delivers. Inside, ball one, breaking ball. Runner goes, 1 0 pitch. He's outside, throw to second, is not in time. And Roper has a stolen. The pitch was a strike, I do believe. Yes, 1 1 the count. One and one with two outs. Dogs looking for a response here after the three run previous inning for Cartersville. Swing and a miss. And now it's one and two dogs down to their final strike in the inning. Top of the fifth, two outs. Roper is at second base. One two pitch popped up to the right side. First baseman Cole has it measured. He's got the ball in his glove, makes the catch, and that'll leave the runner stranded at second base. We head now to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It's Cartersville five and Cedartown three back after 60 seconds on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Cedar Stream, the industry leader in screen printed apparel. They offer screen printing, embroidery, and signs and banners. At Cedar Stream, they have a fully automated screen printing facility here in Cedar Town with the ability to efficiently and effectively distribute products all over the United States. Cedar Stream is a local family run business with a big vision. Contact Cedar Stream today to find out what they can do for you. 800 686 7488 or cedarstream.com. Cedar Stream, shirts, it's what we do. Hey, it's the Border Mexican Restaurant, located at 718 North Main Street, right here in Cedartown. Their phone number, 678-246-1031. They serve a wide variety of your favorite Mexican food made fresh daily. Great food, great fun. It's great for the whole family. Come see us at the Border Restaurant, right here on Main Street in Cedartown. Or you can call for takeout at 678-246-1031. The Border Mexican Restaurant is the best Mexican food north of the border. That's the Border Restaurant right here in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Welcome back as we head now to the bottom half of the fourth. Dogs will implore a new pitcher. It'll be Owen Pilgrim. Owen Pilgrim will take over. He pitched yesterday against Woodland. Went an inning and gave up a hit, a run. Walked one, didn't strike out anybody. He'll take over for Samuel Formby. Formby pitched pretty well. Regardless of the score, he did pitch pretty well. He went four innings, five hits, five runs, only two of them earned. Four walks and four strikeouts. Loved it to a cut down on the walks there. And again, the... Only gave up the two earned runs, so Owen Pilgrim will try to preserve the score as it is and give the Bulldogs a chance to maybe come from behind and take the lead again. But definitely tough to do against the number six team in the in the state in all classifications, or the number seven team in Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. It's going to be Pratt to lead things off for Cartersville. Pratt, Peters, and Miller. As we are ready to go here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Now a 
ready to go. All the officiating, the two umpires are getting into their positions. Looks like Gavin Allred might be having a little issue with his sleeve, and they, the home plate umpire assists him on that regard, and now we're ready to go here. Pratt is 0 for 1 with a walk, and that one just missed for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Carters will put three on the board in the previous inning. Gerald delivers a 1-0, and it's right down the middle for a call strike one. 1-1 one one the count. One one pitch to Pratt. He fouled at the plates. One and two. Hits the right field and caught by the second baseman. Owen Gerrill. And that'll be the first out. Good job there. He ranges back to make the catch. In the top of the second inning, Arizona leads Atlanta 3-1. to one. A three-run first off of Spencer Strider. Braves answer with a run in the bottom half. Ball's fouled away to the next batter. I believe that's Miller. It is. No, Peters, rather. It's Peters, then Miller. Peters is one for two. Run scored and a strikeout. Game has slowed to what amounts to a snail's pace here. That pitch misses, to, misses outside. It's ball one, popped out of the glove of Gavin Allred. One ball, one strike. Ground ball up the middle. Fielded at second base by by Gerald. The throw to first will be in time. And that is out number two. Where did my daddy go? So Peters retired on the ground out. Gerald to Dingler, and now here's Miller. Miller. A perfect three for three with a couple of runs scored. He's also got an RBI. And the pitch. Stabbed at first base. Dingler's going to win that race to the bag at first. And they go in order here in the bottom half of the fifth. We head to the sixth inning. Cedartown trails five to three back after 60 seconds on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Bradford's Drug Store on North Main Street in Cedartown is your locally owned and operated Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Bradford's accepts most prescription plans and remember Bradford's for all of your gift and decor needs. Bradford's pharmacists take time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions that you may have. Go by and see Bill Brewster and all the fine folks at Bradford's the next time you need a prescription filled. Also use their convenient drive through Bradford's Drug Store, 500 North Main Street, Cedartown, 770-748-3100. And all the folks at Bradford's say, Go dogs. Cedar Valley Golf Course has been the place to play golf in Cedar Town and Polk County for nearly a century. Locally owned and operated since 1924, Cedar Valley Golf Course offers 18 holes of some of the most beautiful fairways and greens in the area. Cedar Valley Golf Course is a proud supporter of the Cedar Town High School Bulldogs and the greater Cedar Town and Polk County region. Call for tee time 770-748-9671, located just south of Cedar Town at 1811 Buckhannon Highway. Cedar Town's original golf course, Cedar Valley Golf Course. 
Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. And welcome back, Cedartown Bulldogs Baseball and the Cedartown Bulldogs Sports Network, the Big Double A. As we head to the top of the sixth inning, Cedartown trailing. And the Cartersville hurler completing his warm-up toss. It's going to be a new pitcher. Bishop will be the new pitcher. We'll take a look at the line for Herbie, he, or for Ruby. He went three innings, one hit, one strikeout, one walk, no runs allowed. So not a bad outing there for Ruby. So Bishop will take over, inheriting a 5-3 lead. Throw on to second base, and we're about ready to go here. Dogs will start out with Samuel Formby, who was the starting pitcher in the ball game. He was relieved, and I uh, would assume he went back out to right field. Here's your trash. Where does this trash go? Samuel Formby, then Dalen Holiday, and Owen Gerald do up here in the top of the sixth. Good job. First pitch, popped him up in the infield. Catch made as the shortstop was standing right on the bag at second. Larkin makes the catch, one pitch, one out. Seartown down to their final five outs. Here's Dalen Holiday. Dalen in this ball game is one for two. He's, run, he's scored a run. Dogs have scored runs in these games with the exception of Last night, you know, we almost came back against uh, Whitewater. We've led a lot of this game. There's a foul back from Dale and Holiday, strike one. Dogs have just ran into trouble and things kind of spiraled out of, out of, uh, out of hand, and that's kind of been the story of the season for these Bulldogs. take away a bad inning here and there, and the dogs are over 500, I think. 0-1 pitch, a swing and a miss, kind of off kilter there by Dale and Holiday, and it's nothing in two. Cartersville has plenty of uh, pitchers to choose from, I'll tell you that. They're, they've got about two columns of reserve players. That one missed well outside there. Good stab there by Pratt. One and two. 802 your time, W291D in Cedartown, 106.1 FM. 1340 AM, WGAA. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Holiday will be tagged out, and that'll be the second out of the inning. So it's going to be up to Owen Gerald if the dogs are going to score here. He'll Owen 0 for 2 with a run scored. Bishop delivers. Strike called over the outside corner, nothing in one. That one misses. Ball one. One ball, one strike to count. One, one to Gerald. Hit on the ground, a shortstop. He'll pick that up in Throw to first. He got the tag on him. It pulled the first baseman off the bag, but a great swat tag there by Cole, able to save the play, and the inning is over. Three up, three down go the Bulldogs on the top of the six. We head now to the bottom half. Cars will up five to three. 60 second break on the Cedartown Bulldog Sports Network. Cedartown Automotive is your one stop for all your automotive needs. For oil changes, new tires, or tire repair, brake work, tune-ups, air conditioner service, or repair, think of Cedartown Automotive. 
Cedartown Automotive is a longtime supporter of Cedartown High School Athletics here on WGAA. Cedartown Automotive on East Avenue in Cedartown. Give them a call today at 770-749-5040 or stop by their beautiful location for fast and friendly service. And all the folks at Cedartown Automotive say, Go dogs! Looking for a good used vehicle? Don't go out of town. Come see the folks at Dingler Motor Company, 526 North Main Street. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Dingler Motor Company can get you back on the road in no time with their in-house financing. Top quality, pre-owned, late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. Stop by and check out their wide selection at 526 North Main Street across from Livewire Surplus. Call them at 770-748-0906. Search them on Facebook at Dingler Motor Co. That's Dingler Motor Company. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Owen Pilgrim will continue his work and relief on the mound for the Bulldogs as Cedartown trails 5-3. Five, five runs on five hits for Cartersville, one error. Three runs, four hits, five errors for the Bulldogs. And for the Canes, it'll be Larkin, Daniel, and Purdy do up. Larkin one for two. Daniel 0 for 2 with an RBI, and Purdy is 0 for 3. Getting late, folks. Dogs only have three more outs left, and Pilgrim's job is simple. Keep the, keep the score where it is right now. Not an easy task against these Canes. Bunt try, left side. Going to be a tough play. Nobody's going to get to it. Pilgrim kind of overran and almost had to skip over. That pretty much eliminated Ace Allen from being able to make a play. And Cartersville is hoping to put the dagger in the Bulldogs here in the sixth inning. So Larkin is now two for three. That'll bring up Daniel. Daniel 0 for two with an RBI. Pilgrim delivers. It's upstairs for ball one. Seertown was locked up pretty close with Woodland last night, but a, some tough, a tough a couple of innings late. Dogs surrendered the lead and eventually lost the ball game. And Dogs trailed against Whitewater earlier in the day, and Seertown was able to come back, got close, but... Never able to overtake them. Seertown had an early lead in this one. That ball's driven to right field, giving chase is Formby back to make the catch. Throw goes toward first base, and he's going to be back safely. Good job there by Formby. He had to kind of backpedal to get to that one in right center field, and that'll be out number one as Daniel flies out to right field. So Daniel retired, that'll bring up Purdy. Purdy, 0 for 3 with a run score. Runner on first with one out. The pitch. Upstairs for ball one, one ball in, no strikes. You know we're talking about the retraction of the classifications of GHSA. There's a pitch down low for ball two, two balls and no strikes. And they may call they may have called a illegal pitch and I think they did or either a balk. It was an illegal pitch. So the runner will be awarded second base and it's still one ball and no strikes. But Cartersville joins our region next year, including Woodland and Hiram, Dalton, Altoona and Southeast Whitfield. Calhoun, who is here, they're, they're in the same region with Cartersville now. They're playing over to our right. I was just uh, said hey to the uh, Calhoun announcers who were here calling the game for the Yellow Jackets. They're actually going to go down from 5A to 3A. So they make an even bigger jump down in classifications. So don't worry, fans. No, no region with, with Calhoun in it. Although the dogs have done well against Calhoun of late in baseball and football. That pitch misses outside, two balls and no strikes. 
in the season that Searchtown went to the state championships. Searchtown beat Calhoun at their place. On their way to an undefeated appearance in the state championship before falling to Benedictine. Lost to Calhoun last year. Two-o pitch is low for ball three. Three and nothing. The count. Runner on second base. Temperature down in about 54 degrees outside now. Almost a 10 degree drop since the sun went down about 30 minutes ago. 3-0 pitch is high for ball four. So runners will be at first and second and a four pitch walk will put two on for Cameron Cochran. Looks like a pinch runner will go out there for Purdy. Well, that might be Purdy anyway. Purdy's may have just jogged out there to give something. I'm not sure what that was, but uh, something is something is being done. I was looking down, and then I looked up, and all of a sudden they're all moving around out there. Regardless of the fact, there's still going to be runners on first and second, no matter who it is. Now Cochran taking the opportunity to tie his shoe. And now he's tightening up his gloves. Finally, we can get this game back underway. He takes about three practice swings, and now 15 minutes later, we're ready to go. First and second with one out. A little flare shot to the right side. Should be playable. Samuel Formey makes the catch. Runner will tag, but will not try it. And that'll be the second out of the inning. like it's top of the third, still three to one lead for Arizona over Atlanta in the home opener at Cruz Park tonight. About 35, 40 minutes south of here. So here's Cole. Breaking ball, high and tight, ball one, one ball, no strikes now to him. Low ball two, two balls and no strikes. Two oh, ball three, three and nothing. A walk would load the bases. a strike it's three and one three balls and one strike it's been a long day uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, <laughs> it's uh well, well thank you all for sticking with us here for the last uh several hours and thank gail connor for sticking with us back at the radio station three balls and one strike and the pitch 
is hit foul down the left side. And the count now full, three and two. Three balls, two strikes. I think these are the only two ball games happening on this side of the complex. Ours and the Calhoun game on to our right. Runners go, pitch is high for ball four. They're loaded up. So Cole will walk and the bases are loaded and here's Rothschild. And now we have a coaching visit from the dugout. Rothschild is 0 for 2 with a walk. is continuing on the mound. That looks like Coach Smith out there. It's kind of tough for me to see. But he's out there talking to both Pilgrim and Allred. No ball games tomorrow for Cedar Town, but we will have three games next week as we return to region play. Monday, we host Southeast Whitfield. Hope you'll join us at the Dog Pound for that. Only two more home games in the regular season and possibly for the whole season if the Dogs aren't able to make a home playoff berth. They're going to have to really play well the last six games. Ground ball, pass shortstop. That is going to be fielded. The throw will go to first base offline. The run will come home to score to make it 6-3. to three. It's an infield hit. X Holloway able to cut it off and keep it from going into the outfield. It actually kept a, another run from scoring. Cartersville leading 6-3, to three and Rothschild gets the RBI. That'll bring up Pratt. Base is still loaded, and it's a 6-3 lead for the Canes. And Pratt 0 for 2 with a walk. Pilgrim deals. Outside ball one. James running at third, Coles at second, Rothschild at first line. Shot down the left side, that is a foul ball. That just missed emptying the bases. Well, that would have rolled around in the corner over there. Count is one ball, one strike with two outs. One ball, one strike with two outs. Pilgrim set and fires. It's low for ball two. Two balls and one strike to count. one ball three upstairs pitch away from walking home another run three balls and one strike with two outs the canes have scored one here in the sixth a three run lead six to three Pilgrim comes set. 3 1 pitch. Ball four upstairs. It's now 7 to 3.
Makes it a four-run lead for Cartersville here in the bottom half of the sixth. And they'll put a runner out there for Pratt. That'll bring up Peters. Peters is one for three, a run scored, and a strikeout. Breaking ball is high, ball one, and Pilgrim is not. He is struggling here to throw a strike. He pitched yesterday, and it's been a long day for all the dogs. Ball two inside. Foul ball drops into the field of play here for Cedartown, so. Owen Gerald retrieves that foul ball. Two balls, no strikes. Pitch on the way. Line toward third, stabbed there at third base. Great play there by Ace Allen, and that saved a bunch of runs. Cartersville gets two, but that's it. And we head now to the top of the seventh inning. Cartersville seven, Cedartown three. Let's take a 60-second break. We'll come back. We're the top of the seventh after this. Rocky and Patty Tillery, two Cedartown High School graduates, and they stayed right here in the county and went into business. They employ right at 100 people, and they've been doing that for a long time. Most of their work is from out of the county, but they want to push our youngsters here, no matter what they're doing, Little League, Pony League, high school baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and that's Polk County Public Service. They appreciate serving you. Are you ready for steel? Equipment, that is. At Croker's Hardware in Cedartown, we've got all the steel equipment. Blowers and shredder vacs, chainsaws, augers and drills, trimmers and brush cutters. We're very proud to be a retailer for the steel product line. As an independent dealer, we can provide many services that the big box chain stores just can't match. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff is always ready to help you select the equipment that meets your specific needs. So call Croker's for a steel today. That's 770 748 4842 to learn more about steel in Cedartown. Cedartown High School Baseball is on the Big Double A. Last chance for the Bulldogs. They trail 7-3 to three to the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. Andrew Carter here with you from, Car from uh, Lake Point Sporting Complex in southern Bartow County. Cartersville High school just about, hmm, I guess, five miles north of here, five, six miles, something like that. Searton so Bulldogs will bring Cole Dingler, Gavin Allred, and Jack Roper, seven, eight, and nine. Jack Roper's had a pretty good day at the plate, two for two with two RBIs. Cole Dingler 0 for 1, and Allred is 0 for 2. And the Canes may have another new pitcher out on the mound. We'll see if we can catch who that is here in a moment. If so, that would give Bishop an inning of work with one strikeout, no runs or hits. Glad you've stuck with us here this evening. Beautiful night. But it's chilly out there, just a little chilly. Carswell pitcher completing his warm-up tosses. Boy, he's throwing it pretty hard out there. Number 21, I believe, is the new pitcher. Let's see if we can. Yep, 21 is it. That is Andrew Purdy, who comes over from third base to play to pitch. So Purdy will be the new pitcher, number 21. Wind still blowing in a bit, which is going to make it feel even colder than 
55 degrees. Well, Cole Dingler is going to lead it off here. So if the dogs want to come back, it's going to start with him, and that's a ball that, <laughs> that was hit foul. It actually ricocheted off the mask of, I think, the catcher, and then it went so far up it hit the uh, awning above, above the other field and then rolled onto the other field of play. So... It was pretty hard. Ball one upstairs. One and one now. The count to Cole Dingler. Swing and a miss. Missed the high heat. One and two. The one, two. Fastball high and away, two and two. Brave scored in the bottom half of the third. They trail 3-2. There's a ball served to the right side. It will be playable. And the catch is made out there and right for Cartersville by Miller. And that'll be the first out of the inning. Dogs down to their final two outs here in this ball game. I'll bring up Gavin Allred. And Gavin is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. the pitch. Down low, ball one to Allred. Pitch on the way. Big cut and a miss on that big pitch. One, one. Ball two. Two and one the count. Big cut and miss there by all red. Two and two now. Time called at the plate. All red steps out. And now we are ready. Purdy delivers. Fastball missed up, three and two. The payoff pitch, here it is. Hit in the air to right field. Right fielder has to back up, but Miller is there. He'll make the second catch of the inning. That is out number two. The dogs down to their final out. It's going to be up to Jack Roper. Jack's had a good day at the plate. Two for two. A run score, two RBIs. Go, J. Rowe! So Roper, the last hope for the Bulldogs. Fastball misses low. One ball, no strikes now to Roper. X all they would love a turn. Getting late here at the ballpark. 1-0. That's going to be fouled to the right side of the parking lot, or the, I say the parking lot, the uh, sidewalk out there. 1-1. One one. When we uh, finish up this, this game here in a moment, we will wrap up quickly. No break. We'll just do the quick wrap up and then sign off after that. 1-1 one, one pitch, called strike two. Now the dogs down to their final strike. One and two the count now to Jack Roper. And he's facing some heat right now from Purdy. One, two pitch. 
Just missed outside. Didn't miss by much. 2-2 two, two the count. Sign given from Pratt, and Purdy delivers a 2-2. Two, two. Ball three outside. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Payoff pitch on the way. Just got a piece, found it straight back. And Jack stays alive. Another payoff pitch to you. Pretty winds and deals to Roper. Just got a piece again. Jack is fighting for his baseball life right now. Another 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Did he go? We're going to check. Nope, ball four. That'll bring us to X Holiday. Good at bat there by Roper. Holiday. So Roper's at first base. Here is X Holiday back to the top of the order. X is one for two with an RBI. He's also struck out. X takes a strike 0 and 1. You ready, X? Roper a short lead. He's not going to be too uh, crazy about his lead over there. The 0-1. Foul away. Strike two. And the dog's down to their final strike again. Go 0 and 2 to Holiday. Birdie is set. The stretch and the 0-2 pitch. Fly ball to the left side. Playable for Peters. He's got it, and the inning is over, and the ball game is over. And Cedartown falls to Cartersville 7-3 here at Lake Point. So the dogs get swept in the tournament here. But uh, the good thing about that is, folks, is that uh, it doesn't matter in the playoff hopes for the Bulldogs as they will resume region play next week. So some things to figure out between now and then. The, the Cedartown, of course, will be on spring break, but not the Bulldogs. They'll be playing next week as Cedartown will face the Southeast Raiders in the final uh, series of the season. The game ends like this. Seven runs, seven hits, one errors. Three runs, four hits, five errors for the Bulldogs. And that will do it for us here. I want to thank all of you for sticking with us through both of these ball games. I want to thank Gail Connor for operating the controls back at the radio station. Tune in tomorrow morning. Sam Branch will be on for the birthday club and trading post tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, folks. God bless and stay safe, and we'll talk to you next time. And as always, go dogs. Good night, everybody. W291 DS Cedartown. Your home for the Cedartown High School.